All the best. I'll uh, the minute Simon joins in, I'll welcome him and then I'll push off to my class. Okay, ma'am. Thank you.
Just give me a call in five minutes. Hi, Simon. Welcome back. Hello again. Hello again. <laughs> Simon, as I told you that I bring diamonds to you. Today I bring to you to the uh, the diamond of finance and economics and uh, accounting. Dr. Lakvinder, she um, she uh, you know takes care of all the academics that happens out here. So no teacher even moves an inch without informing and taking permission from Lakvinder. So uh, very very strong uh, pillar in our Amity Business School. I told you I'll get diamonds, all our diamonds um, from the business school. So uh, very strong and probably her accounting uh, background does not give us even breathing space. Uh, so she's always bang on time. She gets all the everybody do whatever they are required to do. So very tough taskmaster, very good in accounts. She's written several um, these uh, leading, uh, you know, um, leading newspapers of India, Economic Times, etc. You'd already know that. She's published there apart from her usual academic publications. Author of books, um, uh, convener of several uh, conferences, etc. So the list will go on and on. I have uh, the formal MC reading all her achievements. I was just um, listing them straight off my hat. And within a minute, I will start. So welcome, Dr. Lakwinder and Simon. In a minute, we'll start. Thank you, ma'am, for such introduction. Hello, Simon. How are you? I'm okay, thank you. I hope you're well as well. All well, all well. Thank you for this uh, nice exchange program. I was going through your uh, site also, and I was when I was uh, reading about uh, sustainability, I came to know so many things from like your uh, site also that that's working on so much of sustainability. So it's a great opportunity for all of us. So thank you so much. Absolutely, thank you. You're very kind. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so it's four o'clock and uh, from our side and like always we'll stick to the British way of doing things. So uh, may I please ask the MC of the day to take over. Thank you so much. So I mean I'll run off to a class and I'll leave you with the absolute genius of Dr. Lakvinder and I'll join you. No, I don't think I'll join you. I'll join you tomorrow with the closing because my class is from four to uh, four fifteen to five fifteen. So it's over. It'll extend beyond this uh, session. And uh, then I'll, I'll WhatsApp you on some details for tomorrow, but we'll do that later. So over to the formal MC. No problem. Yeah. Greetings of the day and namaste. I, Divya Madan, along with my fellow comrade Shubhi Yadav, welcome you all to the session on economic and financial growth and sustainability. An important aspect of the financial sector functioning as a development which eventually ensures its positive impact on the country's economic growth. Economic growth is usually measured in terms of an increase in gross domestic product GDP over time or an increase in GDP per head of population to reflect its impact on living standards over time. However, the linkage of sustainable economic and financial growth argues that although the concept is often seen as essentially about the environment, sustainability is in fact about using economic development to foster a fairer society while respecting ecosystem and natural resources. Sustainable development outlines these challenges and suggests what can be done to meet them. Over to you, Shubhi. To take us forward, I would like to introduce Dr. Lakwinda Dillon a specialized faculty of corporate finance, strategic financial management, accounting for managers, and international finance and forex management, working with Amity Business School, flagship institute of Amity University, Uttar Pradesh, for more than 12 years. Dr. Dillon is a PhD, MPhil, and MBA in finance. She has also successfully completed certificate course on strategic management from IIT Delhi, and Summer School in Empirical Finance and Accounting Research from IIM Kolkata. In her illustrious continuous career of more than 17 years, 
She has achieved many milestones in teaching of various subjects of various dimensions of accounting and finance. She has attended and organized number of workshops and FDPs. Along with her teaching assignments, she has also imparted training to the employees of Tata Motors, Access Bank, Personal Below Officer Rank, and Armed Force Officers of DGR on analysis of financial statement. Ma'am, now I would like to pass the baton for the rest of the session to you. Thank you, Shubhi and Divya, and for such nice and wonderful introduction. So I'll just start my uh, presentation like the topic is very vast. I really uh, face a lot of problem in converging it because I have to bring down to a particular um, understanding level. So in that case, I'll try to cover upon lots of aspect of economic growth and how this leads to economic and financial sustainability. Can we get the next slide, please? OK, thank you. So if we talk about economic sustainability, it refers to practices that is uh, that supports long term economic growth without negatively impacting social environment and cultural aspects of the community. Economic sustainability is defined as the way to achieve economic growth while respecting the environmental limits, finding ways to minimize damages to the natural world and making use of Earth's resources in a sustainable way. So if we talk about economic sustainability, most of the time economic sustainability is often misinterpreted as the growth in prosper prosperity of business and organization. But it is much more than sustained growth of resources and business profit margin. Today, our economy is reliant on perpetual growth which is unsustainable and it has become a source of issue related to environmental sustainability. Our perpetual growth based economy actually and our addiction to this growth is the core principle that is keeping humanity unsustainable. Next slide please. Thank you. If we look at uh, this diagram, it talks about the three pillars to sustainability. Actually, environmental sustainability is the most important of the three pillars because it is the foundation and limiting factor upon which all other pillars are able to exist. Then comes social sustainability. It is the second pillar and can rise once the environment is sustainable. Basic human needs can be met once the environment is sustainable and then comes economy. So economy is the third pillar and it's very critical and crucial to address because it's our perpetual growth economy that is causing increased damage to the environment. Next slide, please. If we talk about economic sustainability, it's very wider scope and all the SDGA goals. If you look at all the SDGs goals, one or the other way is directing towards economic sustainability, whether we talk about poverty eradication, uh, zero hunger, removing income disparities, uh, removing gender in inequalities or creating job opportunities or planning for consumption of or production, etc. Every goal is associated with creating economic sustainability. All the dimensions of uh, sustainable development goal is directed towards economic sustainability and the yardstick we referred most of the time to check the progress of an economy is through economic growth. If we look at the economic growth, even before COVID-19 has hit the world, it has slowed down from 2% to 1.5%. And during the pandemic, approximately 1.6 billion workers job in the informal sector was at stake. Next slide. GDP plays a very significant role in defining the growth of an economy. And if we look at the data due to COVID-19, the GDP per capita is expected to decline by 
percent and the world is expecting the worst economic recession since the great depression of 1930 according to the world bank forecast the global economy is expected to shrunk by 5.2 percent this year next slide please now whenever we talk about economic growth we refer to as gdp but is growth in gdp an appropriate indicator for economic sustainability can somebody from the class reply to me what is gdp actually because sometime it happens um, that student are not clear with the word gdp itself anybody from the class any any simple uh, definition or any simple meaning of gdp what does it mean when we say gdp anybody from the classroom I hope I'm audible. Can I get an answer? Is there anybody? Ria? There are more than I guess 40 students in this class and like nobody is able to unmute yourself. Can I get an answer? Sahil, Archit is there, Harshal is there, Ishita. Yes, good evening ma'am. People, yes. people have raised their hands ma'am. Divya oh, has raised their hands. But I can't see. Okay, Divya is there. Yes, Divya. Can I get an answer? What, what GDP exactly means? Yes ma'am. Uh, yeah. Ma'am, GDP, uh, gross domestic product, it basically means, ma'am, it's the final value of goods and services produced within the boundaries of a country or during a specific period of time. Okay. Very good. Very good. So this is what the problem is. Whenever we talk about economic growth, we refer to as GDP. But GDP is, uh, but if we talk about GDP, it's not the sole indicator for uh, like so economic sustainability. And if you look, according to SDG 8, no country has to have a GDP growth target of less than 2% expect when recovering from recession. And in particular, at least 7% per annum GDP growth in the least developed countries. In general, GDP cannot be uh, the sole indicator for measuring the progress of an economy as it does not tell us how much the average income is or nor does it tell us how many people are at the lower end of the distribution of income and are thus striving or uh, like starving. So if we talk about GDP, it is like it's not a sole indicator that says that a particular economy is sustainable. There are n number of factors. Can I uh, go to the next slide, please? OK, there are many variants to sustainable economy and um, minimum living standard and income distribution is one such very significant factor in economic sustainability. So GDP Growth rate is not a sole indicator. Rather, if we talk about minimum living standard and the income distribution, it plays a significant role. And the percentage of people below the minimum living standard is more important than mere GDP growth. The minimum standard is defined by the international poverty line. When referring to developing economies equivalent to anything that is less than $2 per day, and but UK and US uh, set their own target. If we look at this data, it's very surprising and painful. In the United States, 15% of people are living below the minimum standard of living. If you talk about UK, 14%. And the shocking part is in India, it is 76% of people living below the minimum standard of living. And in China, it is 36%. Referring to this data and thinking of achieving economic sustainability, it's really look very difficult and in fact impossible. So there are different SDG uh, 8 basically talks about a very holistic way to achieve the economic growth. Can I get the next slide, please? OK, and they have defined 12 targets. 
to achieve economic sustainability through decent work. These targets are sustained economic growth, diversify, innovate and upgrade economic productivity, promote policies in support of job creation and uh, growing enterprises, um, improving upon resources, efficiency, consumption and production. Next slide, please. If you look at the other targets, the full employment with equality in pay packages, promoting youth employment, education and training, working on uh, human trafficking, child labor, protecting labor rights and promoting uh, self working environment. So these are some of the targets that has been set. There are total 12 targets. Can I get the next slide please? Promoting sustainable tourism, providing banking insurance and financial services, enhancing um, age to trade support and working on global youth employment. And if you look at all these targets, it is quite evident there are there are multiple variants upon which we need to work for inclusive economic growth and create a ec create economic sustainability. All these targets are interrelated and interlinked to sustainable development goal. Next slide, please. Thank you. On the basis of all these 12 targets, following variables are identified that are significant in creating economic sustainability. If the resources are optimally allocated and utilized, keeping in mind the sustainability goal of creating and working upon green economy, many issues may be resolved. Now green is just not a color. It signifies and uh, represent growth, balance, renewal, sustainability, which means achieving development without sacrificing the environment. So increase in productivity without compromising on environmental issue will promote achieving all the related goals on, of sustainability. Creating employment opportunity is directly related to increase the increase in the standard of living of people. It stimulates the economy when jobs are created, our economy also grow. And whenever people are working and able to provide for themselves, the moral uh, their moral increases and uh, the things get stabilized. By creating job for people, many economic issues are resolved. Same way promoting entrepreneurship, removing income disparity, strengthening the financial system and coming up with innovative products and adopt, adopting technological advancement. Everything is going to lead us to a very strengthening. It's going to lead us to sustainable development. It leads to strengthen the economy that ultimately results in economic sustainability. Developing alternative sources of energy is very important in economic sustainability. Energy is the key source of economic growth because every economic activity has a common input known as energy. If we have energy in abundance, then there is no problem. But the issue is we are more dependent on fossil fuels for energy and fossil fuel being a finite resource. The extraction is becoming harder and more expensive. So countries are looking for alternative source of energy that is natural and renewable. India is focusing on renewable sources to generate energy and is planning to achieve uh, almost 40 percent of its energy through non fossil sources by 2032, which is currently 30 percent. India is also working on uh, to increase its renewable energy capacity from 175 uh, gigawatt by 2022. And if I talk about UK economy, they are actually leaders in natural and renewable sources of energy, whether to talk about the wind, solar, hydro or energy from what waste UK is doing very well. In wind energy, I just came across an article and I was like very happy to see that that how well they are uh, like taking care of uh, their energy requirement. In wind energy, the UK is world leader in offshore wind with uh, uh, like more installed capacity than in any other country since May 2017 and one rotation of an eight megawatt turbine 
can uh, power an average house for 29 hours and this increase the capacity in driving down the cost also if we talk about energy from uh, waste uh, there is 16 million uh, pound food waste anaerobic uh, digestion facility and utilizing market leading uh, processes and technology it processes almost 60000 tons of unavoidable food waste per year generating in excess of uh, 3 megawatt electricity enough for 5600 household so it's it's actually marvelous but when we look at the solar energy utilization also again they are doing wonders in that also so it, it and since it's 2017 they broke its all solar power records and provide 8.7 giga uh, watt in half an hour or uh, what we can say it's 24.3 percent of demand so same as for the energy from hydro so if you look at the british company um, gilkes have uh, supplied over 6800 units into more than 85 countries over 16 um, uh, 160 years approximately. So if we talk about energy, energy plays a very significant role in creating a sustainable economy being an input to all the processes. So energy sources propels an economy and with the right source it creates sustainability. At first place it low, the uh, lower energy prices reduces expenses for uh, consumer and uh, businesses it increases uh, it, it helps in increasing disposable income when the cost is reduced and that can be spent in many other ways further lower energy prices also reduces input costs to nearly all the goods and services in the economy and thus uh, making them more affordable next slide please So if you talk about economic sustainability, so it is uh, basically. Uh, uh, can you go back to the next slide, please? The decoupling part. Yes, thank you. So if we um, talk about economic sustainability, it is important because it is like uh, important in the sense is it's decoupling economic growth from environmental degradation, incorporating eco-efficient measures at the manufacturing and the production stage and advocating green economy. Can anybody say anything related to green economy? Have you heard about this word green economy? What does green economy mean? Means anybody? Ria and Divya's hand is still uh, raised. Green economy. Have you come across this term green economy? What does this mean? Green economy. Yeah, Shagun. Okay, Shagun unmuted, muted. Anybody else? Green economy. What does green economy mean? No one. So green economy is basically when you're taking all the initiatives that is going to create clean system with environment. It's not that you're coloring the economy green. It's basically all your projects, whatever developmental activities you are taking, those activities are actually uh, uh, like it, it's related to uh, creating uh, like clean things in the system. It's it's going to have um, a clean economy. So green economy basically it's like taking care of the projects that are more of eco-friendly in nature. So when we talk about economic sustainability this is very much required. So educating green economy and just taking care of the regulatory requirements and everything. Next slide please. Okay, so in GDP term, India is almost $2.72 trillion economy and the government has set the target of the uh, country to become $5 trillion economy by 2025 and pursue an exclusive and sustainable growth trajectory by stimulating um, manufacturing, uh, building infrastructure, spurring investment, fostering technologies, innovation, and boosting entrepreneurship. 
India is working on all the dimensions to create a very sustainable economy and we can see that how it is recovering at this particular stage. According to BCG report, India is expecting to be the third largest economy as its consumption may triple to four trillion dollars by 2025, owing to shift in consumer behavior and expenditure pattern. And according to PwC report, it's essential. It is estimated to surpass US to become the second largest economy in terms of PPP by 2000, uh, 2040. Lots of policy reforms are taking place in India to make it sustainable. About 65% of India's population is below 35 years of age and 50% is below 25 years of age. There is no dearth of knowledge and uh, like talent in the country. However, we need to upgrade the skills or what we call as upskill the youth to meet the need of technology uh, drive in 20 in a technology drive in 21 century. So India plans to spend almost uh, 1.4 US trillion dollars on infrastructure during 2000 from between 2019 to 2023 to have a sustainable development of the country. In 2017, infrastructure spending in the construction industry amounted to almost about 9% of the country's GDP and infrastructure has been a key um, a driver of the economy of India. The government has taken initiative to invest in the sector, mainly highway, renewable uh, source of energy and urban transportation. India is working on all the dimension and making make in India is one such major national program of the government of India that has uh, that is designed to facilitate um, uh, like uh, investment, foster innovation, enhance skill development. Um, protect intellect pro property uh, and um, uh, build best in class manufacturing infrastructure in the country. The primary objective of all these initiatives is to attract investment and across the uh, attract investment across the globe and strengthen the Indians manufa India's manufacturing sector. Due to COVID-19, there's a huge toll on growth and development, but still government is putting all its efforts to revive and it's expected to grow and um, become stable soon. So um, let's hope for the best. Next slide, please. OK, now these are some of the initiative that India has uh, focused on and they helped us in creating a economic sustainability. If we talk about um, Manrega project, that is uh, what we call as Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act that was uh, there. It worked as a very powerful instrument for ensuring inclusive growth in rural India through its impact on uh, social protection, livelihood security and uh, democratic uh, empowerment. If we talk about Atmanirbhar Bharat, it is introduced during the lockdown period in COVID times only, and it's playing a very, very important role, a very significant role now in India in reviving the different space of the economy in short run and insulating India from any future global turnaround by uh, making it robust in the long run. It's building capacity and scaling up the manufacturing, accelerating infrastructural development, attracting investment and promoting consumption led growth. So the Food Security Act made was again one big initiative that has helped in solving lots of problems that are hindrancing on the way of uh, achieving goal on um, poverty eradication or uh, issues related to hunger and the bill will this bill actually it's it's a very significant step that that's going to boost the agriculture sector and uh, boost in the agriculture sector would results in major job opportunities as agriculture is uh, a labor intensive sector and this is playing a significant role in economic growth next slide please 
So we have seen that um, what economic su sustainability is. So when we talk about economic sustainability, it's it's taken into consideration many, many parameters, many variables are there. So everything, every um, activity that is taking place in an economy, it's something related to uh, one or the other way is related to create or um, it, it's going to have an impact on your economic sustainability, whether you talk about any production activity, whether you talk about any resource utilization resource allocation or any any project that you're taking everything is going to have impact on economy so sustainability of economy is uh, very important and every government across the world is taking initiative to revive their economy and come up come up come out from this um, recession or uh, the covid 19 impact at the same point of time they are also taking care of the sdgs goals that are there so that um, a sustainable world could be created and it could be gifted to our generations uh, the up, the coming generations without creating fuss for them so if we talk about financial sustainability it's it's again a very important um, uh, requirement for every economy so they both are interlinked to each other we cannot separate economics from finance or finance from economics both are actually complementary to each other they they work in uh, tandem with each other so uh, next is we'll be discussing about financial sustainability so every initiative and every economic activity needs funding okay so financial sustainability is something which is required both at micro level and at macro level so it it simply means the ability of ability to manage the financial resources and meet the financial obligation without getting trapped into the crisis can i get the next slide please okay so when we talk about financial uh, sustainability so yeah, sustainable financials uh, are required. So we need to have a financial system. There are different set of participants in the financial system and economic development need a balanced growth, which can be attained by uh, propelling growth in all the sectors uh, simultaneously. The financial system helps allocate saving into investment and channelize it, channelizes the investments and it helps in mobilizing savings and making better use of these funds by allowing investments in various sectors of the economy. So financial system needs to be very strong. Can anybody tell me what are the components of any financial system? If I'll ask you a question, uh, any components of a financial system, any countries having a financial system, what are the various uh, components of financial system? Anybody? It consists, it comprises of what? Financial system. Yes, Divya. Yes, there's Divya, there's Ria, there's so many people. Divya and Ria, and raise your hand because it's continuously raised. Yeah. No one? What are the companies? Yes, yes, somebody is replying. Please. Yes, ma'am. Sham Bansal, Sham Bansal, this sir. Yes, Sham, please reply. What are the components of financial system? If you yeah, talk about financial institutions, financial markets. Yes, very good. So if you talk about um, components, so we have financial system, we have financial institution, we have regulatory body. So in India, the regulatory body is RBI. Can you tell me which is the regulatory body in UK? Any re uh, regulatory body that's governing the financial system of UK? Any, any, any that comes to your mind? Because we are an exchange program, so you must be knowing about them also. So most of the time we discuss only about our country or you talk about uh, like um, uh, US Federal Reserve. So which is the authority, uh, financial authority of UK? Anybody? Yes, ma'am. Sahil decide. Yes, Sahil, please continue. Ma'am, Financial Conduct Authority, Bank of yes. England and Prudential Regulation Authority of United Kingdom. 
Yeah, very good. So this financial conduct um, authority actually regulates the financial services industry in uh, UK and it's um, actually protecting the cons uh, consumers, keeping industry stable, promoting uh, healthy competition between the financial service provider. Thank you, Sahil. That's great. OK, so uh, moving ahead, uh, like if you talk about financial system, so financial system, if the components are there, there are different components. OK, so you have to have a very strong regulators. You have to have proper participation. There should be proper flow of funding and then only a country's financial system will become more stable and more financial stable financial system can only help in uh, mobilizing the requirements of um, funding, whether it's a requirement for the government or whether it's a requirement uh, for the uh, like corporate houses because both are going to work together to create that sustainability uh, for the economy. Next slide, please. Yeah, thank you. A sustainable financial system, we look at the working definition. It says that we need to have a sustainable financial uh, system to have financial uh, sustainability. And a sustain the working definition says a sustainable financial system is uh, one that is stable and create value and transact financial assets in a way that uh, shape real wealth to serve the long term need of a sustainable and inclusive economy along uh, with all the dimensions relevant to achieving those needs, including economy, social, environmental issues. So sustainable in employment education, retirement, financing, technological innovation, resilience, infrastructure, construction and climate change, mitigation and adaption. So this is like a working definition that is given for a very sustainable financial system and financial system, if it is not sustained, we are going to face different type of crisis. So I already gave a project to you all for that. That is, uh, it's it's a banking crisis may be there if, if, if one aspect is not well, if there may be um, a debt crisis may be there and uh, you already saw what happened in 2008. So you you must have come across in 2008 also the financial crisis of 2008 so it is the financial system uh, sustainable financial system plays a significant role to avoid all such um, issues next slide please and if we talk about the financial system what what type uh, like uh, what should be a, a financial system should look like so a financial system should have a certain characteristics and it should be one that's going to support a wider economic developmental activities. So what what it should consist of? So first thing is when we talk about the first characteristic, it should be productive. When it when we say it is productive, what does it mean? It improves the productivity. It's generate employment. It support economic growth and it improve society well being. So if you refer to, if you just look at the uh, slide when I was um, taking care of economic sustainability, you saw the same type of variables were there also. That is the reason I, sa I said economics and finance cannot be delinked. They are together. So every economic activity that you want to undertake, you need to need finances. And if you need finances, you should have a proper market from where you're going to get. You should have a proper financial system from where you're going to take the funding. So proper financial a sustainable financial system is uh, very much required in in that case so if we uh, look at the other characteristics of a financial system it is like a transparency so this include basically the fee uh, by uh, the fee that is being uh, charged or um, the what we can say the um, brokerage what is there by charged by the companies investors on social environment performance and impact and and on financial performance and returns. So this information should be accurate. It should be transparency. So there should not be uh, information asymmetry. Every set of information should be available to everyone and it should be presented. Timely information should be available and it should be um, 
publicly available. So this information should be presented in a manner uh, that allows the stakeholders to holistically ex um, assess the uh, uh, system they con that contributes to value creation of an individual participant, whether it's a company, it's an asset owner, or it's an investment manager and of the financial system as a whole. So while again, uh, something that is very important is if we think that transparency itself is not a guarantee that the financial system will function as intended, its absence means that accountability mechanism, that is the regulator, self-regulator and market-based cannot function effectively. So a financial system needs to be very transparent. But again, transparency does not gar guarantee anything. So it is the participants that are there in the system. Can we have the next slide, please? OK. When we look at the other aspect of a financial system, it, it talks about being well regulated and regulated and well governed. So the term regulated and governed acknowledges that the governance process in the financial system includes um, regulators, self regulators and market based processes and the participants charged with the regulating or governing the system includes basically the government and uh, the regulatory bodies, the investment institution, clients, beneficiaries and other stakeholders and all these participants work uh, together. So when we look at the well regulated uh, system, the participants are capable of intervening and willing to intervene where it is needed. Proper monitoring is done and reporting process is followed. Regulators or governance framework that ensures that the financial system supports. It is sustainable and equitable economic development and it should be robust. Robust accounting process should be there in the system throughout the process through the process should be there in the system. Next slide, please. OK, next comes in a financial sustainability when we look at it's fair and equitable and it include your access to financial system or financial uh, services and uh, 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 through accessibility, affordability and awareness. Uh, there may be a very well developed financial system, but if it lacks accessibility, affordability and awareness, uh, then no economy can create a sustainable um, cre can create sustainability. Actually, there may be a, like what we can say that um, uh, some issues that may be faced by all the economies across the world is of financial literacy. So like if we talk about accessibility, awareness and affordability, uh, there is this OECD, that Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. They used to work for financial literacy a lot by checking what financial literacy is and everything. So the results are very, um, it's not so good. It's not very uh, like happening results. Like uh, the worldwide economies are facing problem of uh, uh, poor literacy, uh, financial literacy, not literacy, it's poor financial literacy. So there is two different things we talk about. One is um, inclusive growth and inclusive growth. We uh, want that all the strata of the society should be part of the formal financial system. So this is one issue which is taken care by almost all the countries to create a sustainable financial system. But there's another issue which is um, uh, basically related to financial uh, literacy. So according to OECD, the financial literacy across the world is um, not very promising and because of which inclusive growth is not happening. There's a huge gap as large strata of the society is uh, still not part of formal financial system. And this OECD uh, conducts the uh, survey in 26 countries and economies across three continents, Asia, Europe and Latin America, and includes 12 OECD uh, member countries also. Mm, there are five components to financial literacy, that is you, what you earn, how you save, how you invest, how you borrow when required, and how you protect your funds. And 
trust me there are countries those who are as poor as having 14% financial literacy and it is uh, basically checking this um, aspect financial literacy survey that was that is conducted by oecd actually checks uh, three different parameters that uh, financial knowledge your behavior and attitude so sustainable financial system is one that that will uh, actually have integrated um, this part now can i ask from your class that how many of you actually go for um, uh, like using informal sources of uh, financing in case if it is required whether in your family it's it's a personal question but you may feel free to uh, reply yes any form informal sources which you uses for financing your um, uh, financial needs any informal source so no answer means no uh, no answers i'm getting that means nobody is using because uh, we are educated so we all uh, have a bank account and we used to go for them but there is a very large strata that is not included in this that means despite so many efforts of the government across the world all the governments are taking initiative people are not using formal financial services and because of which they are still in the debt trap because the interest rate that is charged by this informal sector is as high as 40% so so many concepts came up that is self help groups are there cooperative banks are there regional rural banks are there and then you have uh, uh, what we can uh, say this microfinance institutions are there so so many institutions so many uh, small small um, uh, like uh, variables are being created to help people out to come up into the financial stream but as i said that is affordability accessibility and awareness is very important if you speak to people they are not at all aware that what type of services are available for them and they are eligible to get loans they are eligible to deal in banking services despite with despite so much of efforts still uh, not 100% uh, people like it, it's less than 70% uh, people are actually in the um, uh, uh, in the financial system and it this data var uh, varies when you go to uh, like different continent when you go to different nations you will see there is so much of disparity in this also so when we talk about creating equality that means um, equality or removing inequality disparities income disparities so the prop one problem like there's no one such problem there are n number of problem it's it's lack of awareness people are not aware even if we are coming up with so much of initiative so many many organization are working on all these things so if we talk about uh, financial system a financial system uh, it should not be something that it has just been created with having certain participants like there are regulators they are regulating the things coming up with policy but actual demand and supply situation should be met that is what is the demand of the lower strata also and how this demand could be met so supply side and demand side should be met so this again is a very important um, aspect of creating financial sustainability because when we say financial sustainability we are not talking only that we should have a full proof system we talk about how people can um, actually uh, 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 yes, can borrow money they can use money they can take care of their activities as and when required how can we make them independent then only sustainability will be created it's not something a temporary relief is given to them by giving them certain subsidies or certain types of benefits just so indian government is also taking a lot of initiatives to to um, take care of this problem and jandhan yojana has, has played a very significant role in uh, overcoming this problem so if we talk about a financial system it should be uh, such that it should give fair treatment a research was conducted where people were asked a question that is um, uh, do you know that uh, you are uh, you can have a bank account uh, the answer was yes but when it was asked that are you comfortable going to bank or if you if you have a bank account but why 
are not using it. So they said it very clearly that uh, they are not comfortable because they are not um, they are they they are not uh, comfortable in putting questions because it, they they are portrayed as uh, the fools that they don't know anything. So because of that reason, they ignore or they they just avoid going to banks. So this is what as in uh, youth you all have to take care that to create financial sustainability literacy is one aspect which we should take care and we should go ahead with this so if we talk about OECD, OES, uh, this organization check financial literacy and they ask question on three parameters. Your uh, behavior, that is financial behavior. I'm talking about financial knowledge. That means, do you know about a nominal in, a normal interest rate? So people are not aware that there is an interest rate also. They borrow money. So they, they know what they are borrowing. So they don't know the concept of simple interest and compound interest. So we check on this uh, particular tool as the kit is there on that certain uh, structured questionnaire is there on that basis they used to conduct the survey and they used to uh, uh, see the sustainability uh, this uh, literacy part they used to check so financial knowledge is one aspect attitude is another aspect and uh, behavior is the third aspect that is uh, how you uh, like um, uh, what type of habits you have so that is the reason we said we have five things that is um, your uh, earning, your borrowing, your savings, your investments and how you protect your money. So if we talk about a financial system, it should be a resilient one. Re when we say it's a resilient one, it, it is um, consistently, uh, consistently uh, should deliver on its purpose without undermining the system itself. And um, it, it should be adaptive to change. It should be adaptive. It should be, uh, um, it, it's, it should be technologically advanced and it should be a state stable system. So if you look at the uh, like uh, financial sustainability, fair and equitable uh, is very much required uh, for creating a financial uh, system. So when we talk about the creating from the government perspectives, it's financing India's goal for inclusive and sustainable development is challenging because um, it requires more um, uh, like uh, Funding at lower cost, long term capital is required and raising incomes uh, of people from of eight, 800 million people living who all are living less than two dollars per day and creating livelihood for approximately 12 million people entering the workforce every year and generating um, natural resources base at the time of climate change requires a lot of innovation, innovative approach to sustainable finance. So India is playing its role, has taken many initiatives for sustainability finance source for achieving its goals and inclusive growth and sustainable development through financial sustainability also. So like if we talk about um, uh, financial sustainability, uh, government is playing a, a very significant role in creating awareness and then using uh, the like let's say different uh, developing the um, total financial system like in India if we see a few years uh, back there was no commodity trading so the financial market was not well integrated so now the market is also well integrated and things are working it's going well so I just want to conclude here by simply saying that that economic sustainability and financial sustainability go hands in hands and economic growth it's something it's that that's going to uh, uh, it's create a sustainable um, what we can say it's like um, uh, if all the uh, economies of the world are uh, growing it's it's like it's uh, through a uh, green economy and they are uh, adding value and uh, they are taking care of the environment so definitely we are going to achieve the sustainable development goal of uh, being economically sustainable and uh, financially uh, stable and sustainable so this is uh, from my side a any question i'm open for the questions Next slide, please. I think that's a thank you slides from my side. Yes. So 10 minutes I can keep for question answer. Anybody? Um, any 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 question from anybody? I try to converge everything. There is so much of things that that is there when we talk about um, economic and finance together. So any question? 
Yes. No question, Sahil. OK, can I put a question? If there is no question, have you ever heard about um, green bonds? What are green bonds? Anybody from the class? Have you ever heard about green bonds? No, ma'am. Can you can you tell us about green bonds, please? OK, see uh, a green bonds are basically a debt instrument in which capital is being raised to fund green projects, which typically include those uh, relating to renewable energy, clean transportation, sustainable water management, etc. And uh, if we look at India again, India has become second largest market for green bonds with uh, approximately $10.3 billion transaction. And the economic survey highlights that India has the second largest emerging green bond market after China. So green bonds are basically when you come up with any particular project that is um, on clean um, infrastructure system or green, uh, it's clean. Um, uh, like uh, so energy system or something. So you will be, uh, you can go for issuing green bonds. So in India, basically banks and uh, big corporate houses are into this, but still China is, um, uh, it, it's the market leader in green bonds. And India has become the second largest, but still it's a long way to go. Yes, any question from your side? No. Ma'am, can I ask a question? Please, Ria, please go ahead. Uh, Ma'am, what is the difference between green uh, bonds and green loans? Like, is there any significant difference between both of them? See, bonds are basically, as you said, as bonds are generally issued by the governments and the banks. Okay. So uh, like uh, when you go for a uh, uh, loan, you just approach certain banks. OK, so that banks are going to give you uh, the loans. There's not much difference, but all banks are not. Um, it's like into the process of giving you um, a loan for any such project because they will be looking for more profitable projects and generally when the projects are not um, like very uh, very profitable in in the long run or when they are uh, like uh, it's they generally avoid so if in india i talk about there is something called as priority sector lending OK, so when we talk about priority sector uh, lending these days, um, uh, like banks has given um, like RBI has given uh, uh, directives to um, banks to go for uh, giving um, uh, doing priority sector lendings even for the uh, what we can say um, uh, like uh, like how I'll, I'll, I'll just explain you it's like um, uh, uh, in the census, they have said that 40% of their loan activity, which they are taking, they will be uh, uh, giving this to uh, like um, uh, the the companies, those who are coming up with green projects. So it is basically that. So priority sector, basically banks are giving loan on the uh, basis of priority sector lending. So nowadays banks in India are involved, SBI, PNB, these all banks of local banks of India are into going for giving you uh, green loan. So through priority sector lending, I hope I have answered your question. Uh, yes, ma'am, I understood the difference. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, any other question? Uh, ma'am, what is green investing, ma'am? See, whenever we say green investing, it's it, it's like it's the same thing. What we are uh, uh, talking about is green investment. Is means like uh, you are making investment in the projects that are uh, basically pro environment that is taking care of um, environmental aspect and uh, these things are these day uh, having very uh, so what if, what we can say that um, like uh, it's have a huge market 
because uh, when we say uh, a, a green project, a green project is basically you are working on renewable energy, you are working on uh, uh, some projects that are uh, 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 working on uh, that the less carbon emission is there and uh, you're working on such, uh, such projects that is uh, pro-environmental. So they are basically called as green projects, green investment, green uh, like uh, green loans or uh, like even in the banking system also we have like we called it as a green banking concept which means promoting environmental friendly practices and reducing carbon footprint from back banking activities that means the activities which you are taking in your banking system is uh, actually reducing the carbon footprint so this is like uh, it's something that hope i have answered your question yes ma'am thank you so much so it's if you talk about green investing in india is basically it's um, uh, like a lot of uh, activities are there like focus for it's focus basically on green funds and uh, like green investment it's like uh, like it's 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 basically infrastructure green investment is basically it's like how you're putting your money through like um, infrastructures and like if i talk about like bajaj uh, they have taken it's like coming up with the vehicles that are uh, basically complete mahindra and mahindra they are into total electron uh, electrical vehicle system so that is basically a green project so government can go for funding this project banks can go for funding these project very easily because these are something that is creating a sustainable economy they are not disturbing the environment rather they are taking care of the environment anything else No Thank questions. You, um, ma'am, I have a question. Yes, Ria. Uh, ma'am, can we count a uh, forex exchange in sustainable finance? See, when you are integrating the world market, okay. So when you are creating an integration in integrate, when there is an integration in the world market, what happens? that means the risk and the volatility is taken care of so well integrated market it's or it automatically see when we talk about forex what happened what is the problem with forex like if i have uh, euros or if i have pounds or if i have dollars in india sitting in india i cannot go for making any purchase out of it okay so forex is basically in in this context we cannot say that we can have uh, some, uh, like a, a green forex it is something not like that but sustainability here means is like the integration is done or ifrs that we are using that let's say we are using a uh, like there is less volatility in the um, exchange rate so if there is no fluctuation if there is no uh, if there is um, less fluctuation and less fl fluctuation in the exchange rate between two countries can take place only if your economic variables are well settled that means they are taken care of proper uh, taken care of properly so the moment you are taking care of your economic act activities in a better way your economic variables are settled if your economic variables are settled then definitely there is a uh, very less scope of uh, violation or uh, like volatility and if there is less volatility in that case automatically things are at their places so uh, in fact it's not going to um, have much trouble only problem is like if the fluctuations is very high and fluctuations are very high because uh, we do not have uh, proper governance the integration is not proper or uh, there is a huge difference between the two nation in terms of um, uh, like the trade and other things so in that case it happens all these things happen only in that case okay so if you are a, a stable country so definitely you will see See that your exchange rate is well at place so it's going to help you out so this i can't say there is something called as green foreign exchange so it is not like that but foreign exchange is um, something obviously we are uh, in different countries there is different exchange uh, there are different type of um, 
like what we can say that um, currencies are that which we are dealing and uh, the parity condition uh, because now we have derivative products also currency are traded as derivative products so it's a lot of volatility is there but every volatility can be settled well uh, well if there is a proper uh, like um, reform regulation governance and then economic variables are taken care of well whether you talk about inflation whether you talk about your uh, uh, GDP, whether you talk about your interest rate. So if interest rate is like in across the world, if it is same, this is not a normal condition if it is same. So definitely people will not uh, uh, send money to any other country for investment. So you will not see there is FIIs or uh, are working. So FDIs are there. So FDIs are known as very stable investment. So stability will be created. I hope I have answered your question, Ria. Uh, yes, ma'am, you explained it quite well. Now I am able to understand it. Um, also, ma'am, I would like to say thank you for such an amazing session. It was uh, quite very informative. And um, on behalf of uh, okay, Anupama, ma'am, is here with us. I have I have also come just to say thank you. I could hear uh, just a few minutes. I mean, literally two three minutes. And um, uh, you know, I wish I could have stayed on because. Finance is something we don't take, uh, which should be taught when we are doing ABCD and somehow we don't. Um, so I wish I could have, but I have, uh, we are creating YouTube videos. So I, I promise that I will um, uh, uh, listen to it and I will come back to you with some certain, I'm sure with a lot of queries. Ria, please um, uh, give that vote of thanks on the students behalf. I'm sure they have learned a lot and I'll, um, I hope that I can attend the session tomorrow. And of all our students go back enriched. Uh, so ma'am, uh, a big vote of thanks from all the students who attended the session. It was uh, very informative and uh, we all enjoyed and loved the session. Thank you ma'am. Thank you Ria, thank you. Thank you ma'am. Bye Simon. Thank you very much. Really yeah. great talk, thank you. Bye. Yeah, thank you I'll Simon. See you again tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, bye. Thanks, bye. Bye, bye, bye. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye. Okay.